Hello everybody, I hope you're very well. My name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to another advanced session on key grape varieties. This one is on Sangiovese. Uh, so this is the advanced version which is ideal for those of you studying at the higher end of uh, your wine education. So WSET level three, it may be a bit more than you need to know for level three, but level four certainly and above as we go into quite a lot of detail here but if you are studying level three of course you will find lots of these parts interesting but a lot of this will be extracurricular learning for you to really help you understand the grape variety if you are looking for something a bit more simple and you are studying your WSET level two for instance please check out our intermediate version of Sangiovese which is about a seven minute video um, and is a bit more simpler so Sangiovese um, before we move on, we'll just mention who we are, of course. So I'm Jimmy Smith of West London Wine School. I'm the owner and founder of the school here in London, as well as South London Wine School. Uh, and I have a cool, wonderful, little, charming, funky wine bar called Streatham Wine House as well. So if you are in London next, please come and see us for a class or a glass. If you have any comments or questions, please get in touch with me at Wine with Jimmy on both Twitter and uh, and instagram as well It'd be great to uh, see you on there um our websites are below at the bottom if you need any more information about our bar or our courses at our schools so sangiovese um has a very complex history to it and it has a really um a history which has only really been identified um in the last sort of 10 20 years or so so it's quite fascinating because we have believed it's been one thing it's purely tuscan but in fact there's been a few recent discoveries that have rocked the Italian wine world with this variety. We do have first mentions in the 17th century uh, in Tuscany. So this is where our thinking before was all about, because we knew that a lot of the old documents of this variety would be um, from Tuscany. So we're thinking, OK, it's purely Tuscan, right? This is where it stemmed from and then traveled across most of Italy. But we now know that's not true. The earlier mention with it was uh, San Giorgetto, uh, and um, that's a very early sort of synonym for the variety uh, mentioned uh, around Tuscany. Our um, next thing is that um, monks uh, originally called this um, Jupiter's blood, or in fact, that was taken from uh, by monks, but from Roman times as well. It's been passed down, Jupiter's blood. So that's where the name Sangiovese comes from, um, due to its kind of color. So Jupiter's blood is, a, is an old sort of nickname for it. Um, it is then the, the findings and very much led by people like Attilio Scienza, who is a brilliant uh, ampelographer, uh, in the Italian wine world, um, found that it's a natural cross, and a natural cross between Ciligio and Calabrese do Monte Nuovo. So Ciligio is actually Tuscan, a quite a rustic Tuscan variety, so that wouldn't surprise anybody. Uh, so when this was found, we're like, yeah, sure, okay, we know that, so okay, so the parent there, Ciligio. But Calabrese de Monte Nuovo is actually from Calabria, down in the, uh, the the toes of Italy in the southern part. So this is really half southern and half Tuscan in its origins, but it's more likely that it comes from the south and Chiligilo was crossed with it down in the south as well. And that's because of the amount of DNA prints that we have, the amount of hits we have of all of its kin that we'll look at uh, in, a, in a while. Um, other names down here then, we have a lot of names. Uh, so Corintonero is a name for it, which you'll find on the Aeolian island of Lipari. Uh, and that's just uh, north of Etna, um, where you find other islands like the Volcano, Stromboli, Salina. Uh, so it's called Corintonero. Um, also, um, we find it under that name as well in Calabria. And then we have lots of other Calabrian names. Narello, Narello Campotto. Portonella as well, as well as Tucani, interestingly, in Puglia. So we have a lot of this um, etymology of Sangiovese down in the south, and we've discovered most of these now with these genetical markers that we have found. Um, it's also, uh, it was crossed with white variety Mantonico Bianco, uh, and it created um, um, lots of the famous varieties that we now know today, mainly in Sicily, but also in Calabria. So the Sicilian um, um, offspring would be Nerello Mascalesi of Etna fame, making those lovely 
rustic reds. And if you understand that Sangiovese therefore is linked to Narello Mascalese in its flavors and aromas, you will find some similarities. And the same with Frappato, the very fragrant aromatic um, red, which is found mainly down towards Ragusa and Aloro um, and down towards that um, Avola area in the south and south uh, east of Sicily. Um, Perricone, which is found more in the central uh, hinterlands of, um, of Sicily, and then the Calabrian variety called Gaglioppo, one of the most fun named grapes, I think, out there. Gaglioppo is, um, is therefore linked to all of these in this list, plus things like Sangiovese, for instance. Um, now, synonyms today that we will find of Sangiovese. I haven't listed all of them, but I've listed some of the major ones here. So a very famous one, of course, is Sangiovese, Sangiovese Grosso, uh, which is the larger berries today, mainly. Um, but then we have a synonym around Montalcino, which is Brunello, um, which is at this fairly high altitude, quite warm area that experienced some breezes from the Mediterranean. It's quite an epicenter of quality for Sangiovese. And then just to the north uh, east of that area, there is Montepulciano. And Montepulciano is where we find Prunolo Gentile. Uh, and this produces quite Chianti esque styles. It's a little bit more continental, a little bit more rustic in style, um, but they can be towards similarities. I think there's sometimes a little bit Brunello, sometimes a little bit Chianti esque. San Giovetto, which is in Chianti Classico, grown up once again on those hills at quite high altitude, uh, and we'll go through the uh, soils in a second. Morolino di Scansano, so Morolino of Scansano. Um, often here it's uh, actually gets some of the most hottest summer temperatures for Sangiovese, and you make these quite juicy, almost jammy wines, but a lot of them are actually made in different methods and sometimes even carbonic maceration, semi-carbonic maceration to give fragrantly kirschy, peppery style wines. And then outside of Italy, uh, in fact, outside of Tuscany from that list is uh, Corsica, where it's called Neluccio. And this uh, makes a uh, fairly um, jammy, sweet, ripe style wines from the island of Corsica, but some of them can be wonderfully elegant at the same time. So interesting amounts of synonym there, etymology behind the variety Sangiovese. Um, in the vineyard, Sangiovese is a warm, sunlight-loving variety, so it likes these warm Mediterranean zones. Um, remember, really, then, its parentage is mainly southern Italy, and then it's moved and to find a nice climate for itself in Tuscany. So it's really quite a, quite a hot loving variety to start with, but maybe finding its complete happiness around the warm Mediterranean zones of Tuscany. So it's like these, so why? Um, so we know that, uh, well, it's found in, in a huge amount of DOCs, DOCGs and IGTs, over a hundred. Uh, so it is definitely Italy's principal grape and, of course, most planted red variety. So therefore, um, a huge amount of expressions behind it. Yes, it. It does like warm climates because it's late ripening. So it needs heat. It needs light. Uh, so it, of course, needs those lovely long summer and autumn days to really fully ripen the variety. Um, it can get quite green if it doesn't get ripened fully. High yielding as well. Sangiovese Grosso uh, can be fairly um, fairly voluminous and you'll find big productions from it. Uh, so that's why you can actually get remarkably simple wines that are often just labelled as generic Chianti DOCG. Uh, and they can be often fairly lightish in colour and fairly lacking in any kind of complexity or, or flavour intensity. They're kind of just juicy, juicy wines. Um, it's fairly resistant to drought, which is OK. It's, uh, it's needed in these areas, not so much around the Marema Tuscan coast, but inland there can be some drought issues. But normally the area of Tuscany, for instance, is a huge amphitheater which has been sort of boarded off by the Apennines. So therefore facing uh, towards the west and it does bring some of the rain off the Tyrrhenian Sea. So you will find that there is a bit of rainfall in this area. Um, the soils. Now, Sangiovese is a very, very important uh, grape variety for matching with the right geology. 
Um, and in this, uh, on this slide, it mentions there a variety called Albarese, or the kind of white limestone soils. Uh, and this is limestone marl, limestone being high in calcium, uh, and marls being kind of um, half clay, half kind of calcium based. But they are both very closely linked. They are sedimentary. They have been deposited through long epochs uh, by seas and oceans and layers and layers upon them. So this is this kind of clayey, marly limestone soil. But then we find these shattered rocks, which are called galestro. And these are kind of um, almost schistous in their appearance. And these are metamorphic that have been pressured. They're sedimentary in origin, but pressured uh, underneath the ground through time and then been exposed through erosion. So these are quite famous for the Chianti Classico area, but also other surrounding zones as well. Um, you will find then in these soils uh, quite high amounts of uh, minerals. Certainly quite a bit of quartz is found in them. Great for a bit of sunlight where reflection or refraction, um, but also calcium, which really produces quite high acids. So the the calcium component of Albarese, for instance, the pH levels here of the soils actually are quite uh, are quite high. But in turn, in the sap in the vine, this creates actually quite high acids as a result. Uh, so pHs in the wines will often be around 3, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. Uh, so these are very acidic wines uh, in, in return. Um, interestingly as well, so if the, Tos the, if the Tuscans had their world rocked by the fact that the variety is more likely to be southern in origin, um, the other thing that really rocked their world is in fact the most famous clones today are not from Tuscany. One would expect that because of the amount of years they have now grown it here, but the best clones which are now being uh, used throughout most of Tuscany actually originated from Romagna. And this is the R24 and T19 clones. So that's another thing which is rather interesting about this. And if you really want to wind up a Tuscan, you could say that the origin is the south and then the best clones come from uh, Romagna, which is over the Apennines uh, in Emilia Romagna. So it's quite fascinating. Um, and then the differences of the biotypes, and, and you will understand this, what we mean by biotype is, of course, something like Brunello versus uh, Bruno Le Gentile in Vino Noble and San Giovetto and so on. Uh, but they can be remarkably different. So certainly when you go from Romagna to Tuscany to Umbria to Lazio um, and then down to Calabria, you will find that there are remarkable differences. And this is really inherent of the environmental conditions. Uh, so the locality and the amount of years they've been growing up in that locality uh, and really started to shape the different biotype of each of these Sangioveses. Yes, genetically they're the same, but the biotypes are quite different. Um, in the winery, it can be found as a single varietal. Sangiovese is more commonly today being experimented with as a single varietal. In the past, it was blended because of its rougher or rustic edges, but today we are able to understand the variety more and really coax the best out of it. So the leading area for this, of course, is the one by law that must be only Sangiovese, and that is Brunello do Montalcino. But in Chianti, you will find it in Chianti Classico, Vino Nobile do Montalpucciano as well, and some even Tuscan wines, the uh, very famous Ceparello, uh, which is the top wine of Isole Elena, uh, is 100% Sangiovese, but classified as a Toscana IGT. So there are some of them out there as well. And even in places like Corsica, you will find them as uh, single varietals. Historically, though, blended with whites, certainly in Chianti, you would have find things like Trebbiano Malvasia thrown in there for good measure. Now no longer allowed, but it was a once a part of it to kind of Rough, uh, soften out the rough edges. Um, today blended with local varieties like Mamolo, Canaiolo, Colorino, obviously very colourful style, uh, to give the wines a bit more density and a bit more oomph and a bit more spice often with these local varieties. But of course, because of the likes of Pierangelo, Pierangelo Antonori and then other great uh, producers like uh, Sasakaya or Nalaya, Masetta, etc., um, there have been a lot of um, international varieties brought into the mix because of 
citing things like Cabernet Sauvignon on gravelly soils. So Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Syrah today blended in with it once again to give it more of an international appeal, more of a ripeness and a roundness, and really to sort of take away the charm of those rustic edges of Sangiovese, which I think can be quite uh, a shame. But of course, this gave birth to the Toscana IGT wines, as well as the Super Tuscans that would sit within that category. Um, and um, these, of course, are uh, the things like I've mentioned, so Ceparello from Isola Elena, but uh, things like um, uh, Tignanello as well. And uh, there, has, in fact, has been the whole area on the coast, the Marema coast, called Bulgari. And that's a, now a DOC today, which actually leads with these varieties and not so much Sangiovese, certainly when you look at Sasakaya, which has its own classification. Um, now, the Slavonian oak from Croatia, the Botte, um, these are quite large and traditionally used for their neutrality and to sort of soften Sangiovese. Barriques from France are being used to give a little bit more of that oxidized note but new oak character to it and it may be a combination of both of these today and Sangiovese can from the premium sites the oldest vines and the identified best soils like Galestro and Alberese will actually produce wines of high tannin and of big acidity which means they have a great capability of aging over long periods of time to help soften their acids and tannins and then develop complex tertiary compounds. Where do we find it? So in Italy, we have somewhere around uh, 56,000 hectares uh, today, uh, which is a lot less than um, we have thought in the past. Um, and that's interesting because um, we have had a big number of it in the past. I'm just checking because I do have uh, my number of this here somewhere. Um, because I think that number should be a little bit higher. I'm just going to triple check from the wine statistics here. Um, okay. Oh, no, it is. Okay, that is correct. So, so yeah, we are actually looking at around 56,000 hectares, which is quite fascinating. So it has dropped then in 60-odd years down from nearly 100,000 hectares to this number today, but I think it's making a bit of a comeback uh, today. So um, most of them, you know, nearly entirely, uh, well, not entirely, but most of it is within Toscana. Uh, but you will find great examples in Umbria, uh, in productions like Torgiano. You'll find stuff in Marche. And Marche, and this is at the bottom of the slide, by the way, Marche with likes of Rosso Conero, where it's blended with multiple Chiano. So Rosso Conero. Emilia Romano, where the famous clones come from, and even down in Lazio and further south as well. But it is Tuscany where we find it most famous. Uh, you have things like Chianti, Chianti Classico, Chianti Classico Reserva, Brunello do Montalcino, and Vida Nobile do Montalcino. Now, the only one out of these is purely has to be Sangiovese's Brunello. The other ones can be blended with other varieties, uh, which we, we mentioned on a previous slide. Um, Chianti is the big one, the uh, greenish area on that map, and that is the often quite disappointing side of Chianti. Big volume, the biggest export out of Italy. Chianti Classico, though, and Reserva can often be very complex and very interesting, as can Vina Nobile, the noble wine of multiple Chiano. Now, this slide is more pitched towards your level threes. There are many others as well, uh, which we can go into. Remember, I mentioned over 100, um, but these are the major ones to fit on this slide. Elsewhere in the world, of course, we mentioned this already, already uh, in Corsica, uh, it is found a lot of it around a Giacchio, and that is um, around 1300, I remember as a Noluccio, where it generally makes quite sweet and jammy expressions. Argentina has the most outside of Italy in the world, and mainly around Mendoza, where it also produces quite ripe styles as well. But it is an interesting number there, 2,300 hectares under vine. Its style then, um, it really depends on the volume being produced and what kind of uh, type, what kind of type of Sangiovese it is. Um, but generally, let's go through generally speaking here. You will find that in the premium side of things, acids are high, tannins are high, and alcohols can be towards high, with a huge complexity of red fruits, cherries, for instance, 
uh, you will find things maybe like plum, red plum, strawberry, maybe some mulberry characteristics as well. But then things like nuts and chestnuts, um, game, leather, oak, mushroom, tobacco, cedar, certainly with age. And these kind of rustic, earthy notes are quite common on Sangiovese. Um, so it's a really lovely, complex expression. The more generic Chianti's will tend to be fruity, um, you know, with, with nice sort of strawberry, raspberry characteristics and a little hint of spice, uh, but not to be anything much more than, uh, than that. And you do really need to pay attention to what is blended in with it, because Sangiovese is quite elegant with its flavour and aroma. And when a, a big sort of ripe Merlot is thrown into it with about 30%, that that will overpower its kind of characters. You'll find more chocolate and darker, you know, black fruits, blackberry, black cherry, and so on, because of the dominance of, of Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon for that matter, or Syrah uh, as well. So really great, great variety, Sangiovese. Um, I hope you have uh, learned something. I hope it's, it's given you a bit of idea about what it's like, where it's from, one of these world's greatest great varieties. If you have any comments or questions, please do get in touch with at wine with jimmy uh, or you can get in touch with the wine schools or the wine bar here in london when you're here please come and see us for a class or a glass it's been a pleasure i hope you've learned something and i'll speak to you very soon thank you so much